example, you're given a ring of charge, and the ring of charge exists in the y z plane. And so the x-axis is perpendicular to this ring, and the ring is centered on the origin, it has a radius of a. And the total charge of the ring is q. And this ring has a very, very thin thickness in this dimension, and it has a very negligible thickness also in this dimension. It's a, just basically a, a line and a very thin thickness. And the question is asking, what's the electric field at some point P that's located a distance X from the origin? So this is what we want. And we want the electric field as a function of X. So what does that mean? It means that if we go to different points on the X axis, what is the electric field as a function of the distance X from the origin? thing we can do in this problem is to get an idea what the direction of the electric field is at point P, the total electric field. What do you think the total electric field would be pointing in which direction at point P? You can think about it from symmetry. If you look at it, take an element of charge dq1 on the top of the ring along the y-axis, and you take another element of charge opposite to it on the y-axis on the other side, dq2, and you look at the electric field due to dq1. It's radially outward at point P, and this is the electric field due to dq1. The electric field due to dq2 also goes radially outward from the charge, assuming, of course, it's positive charge, and the electric field vector will be dE2, and the magnitude of dE2 and dE1 will be exactly the same, because the distance is the same, and the charge itself is the same, and we're assuming here that the charge is uniformly distributed on the ring. So that means that the two vectors here have exactly the same magnitude. So which components then of these vectors will cancel and which components will add? We can always decompose this vector into an x component and a y component. We can decompose this vector into an x component and a y component. And clearly the y components are the ones that are going to cancel. This, the, these are the components that are parallel to the, to the plane of the ring. The, the components perpendicular to the ring are going to add up. We know before we start the problem that we're only going to be interested in getting the x component of the electric field because we know that all the other components are going to cancel out. So from the beginning, we can reduce the time we spend on the problem by just focusing on getting the x component of the electric field. So how would we get the x component of the electric field due to an element of charge dq? Let's get the magnitude of the electric field due to the charge dq. So what is dE? What's the electric field due to a point charge here? If the distance here is r, then the electric field due to dq is just, the magnitude is just ke dq over r squared. Remember we said we only want the x component because we don't need the y component. We know that the y component in the end is going to cancel out. So we just want the x component. So dEx, which is the a symbol for the x component of the electric field due to this charge only, is dE cosine theta. We decompose the vector into the x component only. So dE cosine theta. What is cosine theta equal to uh, in this problem. If you look at this angle theta, it's the same as this angle theta, and this angle theta uh, exists in this right angle triangle here. The right angle is this angle is right angle, and the hypotenuse is r, and the, this distance is x. So cosine theta is adjacent over the hypotenuse, so it's x over r. So we can replace cosine theta by x over r, we can replace dE, the magnitude of the electric field, by ke dq over r squared. If you put these two things, replace them in the formula, you get this. This is the magnitude of the electric field, and this is the cosine. You notice in the denominator we have r squared and r, so we're going to get r cubed. So this is the electric field, the x component of the electric field, only due to this element of charge. And remember, we want to get the electric field as a function of x, so we don't want r in the problem. So how can we replace r and put it in terms of x? Look at this right angle triangle again. You see that the hypotenuse is r, and one of the distances is x, and the other distance is a. 
So uh, Pythagoras' theorem says that r squared is equal to a squared plus x squared. That means r itself is a squared plus x squared to the power half. And we want r cubed. So when you get r cubed, you get a squared plus x squared to the power 3 over 2. We can replace r cubed in the denominator by a squared plus x squared to the power 3 over 2. This is what we get. The final expression for the x component of the electric field due to only this charge dq. So how would we get the total electric field due to the whole ring of charge at point P? We will have to integrate. We want to get the x component of the electric field due to this charge plus the, the x component due to this charge plus the x component due to this charge and so on for the whole ring. We need to integrate over the whole ring. Now in this integration, let's just figure out what are the constants and what are the variables. So is x a constant or a variable? As you go from point to point on this ring, does the value of x change as you're doing that, as you're going from point to point on the ring? No, because x is just the distance between the origin and the point P. It's a fixed distance for this particular problem. So x is a constant, and a is the radius of the ring. It's a constant. So actually, everything inside the integration can go outside up with integration of dq. What's integration of dq? It's basically the sum of all the charges, if you cut up this ring into elements of length, the sum of all the charges of these elements of length, that's what integration of dq is, which means it's the total charge q. We can replace the integration of dq by big Q, and in the final expression we just write it like this, ke x big Q over a squared plus x squared to the power over two. So the electric field, the total electric field at point P, it points in the x direction. It only has an x component and the total electric field in the x direction is given by this expression.